Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at basic FMS programming for the PMDG 737. Now I'm just going to say right now, this is basics. There's a lot you can do with this FMS, but for today we're just going to try to get you enough that can get you in the air without too many shenanigans and goings on. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, you want to make sure you can see the FMS uh, when you're working with it. So what I like to do is I like to press Control 3 on the keyboard to pop us down to this view. Uh, you can also hit kind of Control 2 and get like the preview mode, but uh, you can also do one of these. Um, one of the things you can't do, which is disappointing, is you can't alt left click on this, which is kind of a bummer. Hopefully they feature that in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you're starting cold and dark and the engine's uh, sitting there, again, we have a uh, GPU powering us right now. I'm gonna go up to FMC. It's gonna bring you to this handy dandy page. But what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna break things today because I wanna kind of walk you through the whole process. So I'm gonna go up to PMGG, I'm gonna load it up, I'm gonna load up cold and dark and everything's gonna shut down. <laughs> nice. So let's go ahead and uh, get just the basics going so we can see what exactly what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna pop that sucker on real quick. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna run off the APU. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop a couple switches here just to make sure we're good. APU is gonna come on. We're gonna go ahead and make sure the bleed's set. We're gonna set this to auto. And obviously, once we have some pressure for the packs, we'll go ahead and get that going as well. Everything else, I'm not worried about too much. Uh, remember, the APU is just a little mini. In Why is the front entry open? Okay, who's the jerk who left the front door open? Okay, who left the front door open? That's all right. We'll find out what it is in a minute. I always like to arm those suckers. Um, we're also going to be running some hydraulic pumps here. So one thing you want to do is you always leave on this one when you do it. So I'm waiting for the APU to warm up. I'm going to stick my head down here. Uh, you can see I'm single FMC operation. I'm just going to go to this one. I'm going to close the door. Go away. <laughs> I know you're out there, but go away. Ah, I just need this guy to give me a little bit of room here. Go back to the main menu. Now, do we have enough power to run our APU here? I think it's just about booting up. Look at this. This is a pretty hot thing. This is degrees Celsius. I don't know about you, but if I was out by the back of this engine, I could probably make myself a pretty solid hot dog off the exhaust heat on the sucker. It'd be nice. Ah, there it is. Click and click and now we're good to go we should also get some duct pressure which we are which now means it's going to start cooling off it is already starting to get summer in here all right let's do it close 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 so the first things first we're going to go to the fmc page and the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to initiate where the system thinks it is now i know you're like but you have a gps who cares well it's a little more complicated than that because your navigational system is actually made up of an fmc an iris an iris two guys a radio and multiple other options here. You have the RNP and stuff like that. We have to tell the main system where our current initial position is so it knows where to start from, even though I know you're looking at the GPS coordinate right now going, how about there? So there's a couple different ways we can do this. In the old days, uh, what we did is we came in here, we did something like this. I'm at Bradley International Airport. We come up here and we dial that in. And what it would do is it would give us a last position that looks like this. Now, if we wanted to, we could click on this copy it and then we can go ahead and say this is my current position and you can come over here and say you know this is my basic position here um, if we don't want to do that of course what you could do instead is you could grab that position from being able to do it in the other place but here's the weird part you notice how nothing's going on down here and you also notice how none of these are initiated that's because up above us way way here you're going to notice our two irs's have not even been initiated yet so once you do that look at this i'm gonna go back a page Notice what's going to happen is once that gets to the initial boot up phase, it's going to ask us, where are we? Then we have to do it. Aha! See how it says set IRS position? Now you can either grab this position by clicking on it and clicking here, or if you prefer, what you could do is you could actually grab the GPS position by clicking on it and then clicking on it right here. The GPS is probably a little more accurate than Bradley International. I mean, it's a three mile runway, so obviously we're going to have issues here. After we do that, we go to the root page. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused. Now, you want to be careful. You've got an origin, you've got yourself a destination, and you have the how you get there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the origin. Like I said, we're at Bradley International Airport. Now, you're going to be using ICAO codes here, so not your IATAs or anything like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to dial in your destination. Let's say, for example, I were going over to a PBD today. So do Kilo Papa Victor Delta and click there. Now, theoretically, this is enough information to be able to safely go flying. Now, one of the cool things here is if I have an existing route, I can actually press flight plan request and all of your saved routes will be in here assuming you had saved one so what we're going to do is now now that we have our starting point and our ending point we can now even define things like what runway we're taking off from let's say for today we're using a runway six so i can come up here and say we're using runway six we can also define where we're taking off and landing in a minute but we're going to get on to that now after you have your origin and destination what you're going to want to do is pop over to this page and you're going to want to dial in your route here's how the route works 
This would be jetways and airways. This will be the actual physical waypoints. Now, for example, let's say my first waypoint were going to be HFD, which is a VOR. I'm going to go ahead and dial that in. Notice it's going to say via direct. Now, the reason it's saying via direct there is on account of the fact that we're going to go directly to that. We're not going to take an airway or anything along those lines to actually get to that particular destination. So now, what if you didn't want to take a direct one? Well, let's go cheat and pop over to the desktop real fast here. You're going to notice there's a bunch of these little blue airways. And as a matter of fact, if you were to pop up to the world high, you could see these very, very, very clearly. So now you'll notice that if I actually come down here, Hartford VOR is on this little guy right here, this uh, simple little airway, but it doesn't even have a named airway. You'd have to pop over to one of the starting points. Now, if you go to world low, you'll notice that Hartford is indeed part of the Victor 3. So let's say we want to take the Victor 3 airway and we want to get off at uh, this waypoint right here called Jewett. So what we do is we type in V3 on the left, and then we type in our getting off point. So in this case, we're getting off at J-E-W-I-T. We're gonna press this button right here. So now our route is gonna take us from Hartford down, I'm sorry, up from Bradley, we're down to Hartford, pop over to Jewett, and then we can go from there. So I'm happy with this route. Again, this is the world's simplest route. It's a very, very short flight. So I'm gonna press the activate button. I'm gonna press execute. Now that you have done that, you have basically told the computer that this is my intended flight to travel. There's only one more detail we need to dial in, and that's how we intend to get on the ground, as weird as that sounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the Dep R button, dar, and I'm gonna go ahead and select R for arrival. Now you have all your stars on this side, you have all your approaches on this side, and there are pages of them. But one of my favorite things is if you go to the bottom, it just lists the runway. Um, your route will be incomplete without one of these. So for example, if you want to use runway five, you could press that right there. It'll give you a couple stars if you need it. Uh, you can even play with things like that. I'm gonna press execute. So now it knows we're doing runway five. Well, let's say instead we wanted to do ILS for five. I come here and it's going to ask you how you want to get there. For me, I'm gonna use transition Lafay. I'm gonna press the execute button because I know this will break things and we can show exactly what it looks like. So after you've spent all your time, again, I can press the root button, you can press page two. You're gonna get this big nasty thing called a discontinuity. A discontinuity is a place where your route is not complete. Uh, usually that means I've ended somewhere, but I haven't reconnected back where I want. In this case, I'm going to go from Victor 3 over to Lafay. Now, the way you fix this is you go to the legs page, and there's two simple ways. You can delete the discontinuity by hitting Dell and clicking on it, or you can do the old way, which is where you grab the route behind it, let's say it's Lafay, and then you just stick it into the hole, just like that. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, do you wanna modify this? If you do wanna modify it, just bop the enter execute button down here and you're on your way. If you don't and you say, whoops, abort, you can always press erase and undo it. So I'm gonna go to play, pop that one in there. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Enter. We can also get some root data too if we need it. You can request the wins if you need them. It's actually pretty slick where some of the functions are. We don't have data, so we can't do that. So now that I've eliminated the discontinuity, uh, like I say, I always like to take a couple minutes to go through and make sure there's none because um, it will mess you up. The magenta one is the one you currently selected. Uh, keep in mind at any time if I want to go direct, I can click on this one and then click where I want it. Like I want to go right to Kent, I could click right here and immediately go to Kent. I'm not going to because that's going to defeat the whole purpose of what we're trying to achieve here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear this all out. Boop, boop, and we're good to go. So my route has been programmed. I'm taking off. I'm going to Hartford. Victor 3 to Jewett. I'm going to get off at Jewett. I'm going to fly direct to Lafay. It's a procedure turn, by the way. And then we're going to do an approach transition to Kent. We're going to land at runway 5. Look how sweet that is. Keep in mind, at any time during my flight, I can change that. I don't have to get stuck. So after you've done your route, the next step is to go to your performance in it. So I'm going to go click this button right here. So now when people see this page, they all panic and go, what have you done? Oh, it's not that bad at all. It's not that bad. Things we need to know. We need to know our gross weight and our crew's center of gravity. Now, right now, we'd get this off of like a load sheet or something like that. But what you'll notice is there's boxes here, meaning we can enter this data. Let me show you a trick. So what you can do is you can come down here where it says zero fuel weight. You can type it in, or if you're a hotshot, click on it, and it will list your zero fuel weight right here. So all you do is boop, and now we have our zero fuel weight, plus our gas is going to tell us how much our gross weight is at this particular time. In this case, we're at 143.3, and we're carrying 25.2 tons of fuel, which is quite a bit. Our reserves, um, there's many different reserves. Uh, I was taught 5.6, but this is a 737-700, so your reserve is typically this one. Cost index is an interesting number. It's basically the ratio of how much fuel I want to burn versus how fast I want to go. Low numbers save gas and money, but take longer. High numbers say don't save gas, but get you there sooner. I'm a massive fan of uh, wasting uh, fuel here. Notice, by the way, by changing that number, that's going to tweak the number up top as well. In this case, I'm going to do this one. Now, I know some of you are going, can we do cost index 500? Yeah, you can do cost index 500 if you want. There is a practical upper limit. I forget exactly what it is, though. Oh, that was it. <laughs> so we're going to do cost index 500. 
Up here is your trip and cruise altitude. Usually it makes a general recommendation for you. Oh, this is a pretty short flight. So we're going to go up to 11,000 feet here, which is going to be nice. It'll pre-calculate your top of climb temperature. Again, it's based on current temperature. You can even come in here and dial the expected cruise wind, and it'll expect it. But there's this neat button down here at the bottom. This is performance in it request. So I'm actually going to press execute to save my information. I'm going to press that button. So what did I just do? What I did is I said, okay, good people at PMDG, why don't you go ahead and do the math for me and then go ahead and display everything. So I've already entered all of this data already. That's how redundant I know. And what it would do instead is the moment that button's done, it would say, would you like to do this? And you press the load button over here and it will quickly fill in all these boxes where you are. There it is. So I'm gonna press load. And now notice it grabbed everything and pre-calculated and also changed my cruise altitude because it does it automatically. It'll also estimate your fuel for you, which is awesome. So I'm going to press enter and notice these are all the numbers that have changed. I'm going to press the enter key one more time. I'm good to go. Everything is looking great. So I'm going to go ahead and press this one. And now we have the N1 limit. Uh, by the way, when you're in perf in it, you can actually press page two and you can play with some of these too. I don't mess with these too much though. I just don't need to. All right, we're gonna go to N1 limit. Uh, this is important. This allows us to derate the engine. So what we can do is we can say, it's really hot outside, Mr. Engine. And it, what we'll do is it will reduce the thrust of the engine so that we have a uh, lower perform, lower power takeoff, but that's gonna save gas. It's uh, very, very dangerous, called flex temp. Uh, so of course, if you're not a big fan of that, you, know, you can come out here and you can clean the sucker out if you need to. Like I say, uh, you can come down up here and say, oh, it's actually 15 degrees outside side and of course it's going to get a little grumpy at you you can also do manual uh, selections here i can pick up my takeoff power as uh, 24,000 tons or, yeah, 24,000 i can also define my climb power as a general rule um the 26 by the way this is a bump thrust if you need a little extra kick because it's 26,000 it's quite a bit of thrust and it makes a lot of noise and it's awesome so i'm going to leave it there i'm happy with these numbers um this is one of those things that's covered in the manual there's a lot to this calculation i'm going to leave it alone i have uh what, 11 000 feet of runway and i only need six so i'm not going to bother that. Then we get to the takeoff button. A bunch of things we got to watch out here. The first one is the flap setting. So um, we have a lot of flap settings on this airplane. If I were to float over to the... Uh, we can do flaps 25 if we want for takeoff. We can do flaps 15. You can even do flaps 1. Uh, whatever you decide on is going to be the flaps and you're going to dial in here. So for example, let's say I'm going to do flaps 5. 5, click, done. Oh, uh, after it does that, it's going to give you three reference speeds. This is going to be V1, V rotate, and this is V2. It's also going to give you a little warning. And you need this number badly. How do we get this number? Click right here. And there it is. So I click one more time, and it tells me I need a trim of 6.01. So you're going to come over here, and uh, this is one of those steps that uh, when you neglect it, uh, you shall pay with the ee, ee, ee during takeoff because you forgot to set your trim correctly. Now, why this plane can't just set its trim on its own is a little bit beyond me, but I'm certainly happy I hold down the switch until I get to 6.01. Delightful. All right. Whoa, ew, oh, there it is. So um, we're done here. Uh, the one number I do, though, is I take that 141, and I like to put that up into the MCP at this time. So we're done setting up the FMS here. You can come over here if you want to dial in the runway wind and play with the acceleration height and change all those numbers if you need. You can even change the thrust mode and reduction. Again, this is totally dependent on whatever is going on outside. I can change the selected temperature again the outside. This is your kind of last chance to kind of come in here and fits with these numbers. As a general rule, the only time thing I ever have to change is the one in here, especially if I got in Colorado or something like that, and you need a little bit more get up and go or you need to go a little higher. So let me go ahead and close that one out. And the last number I always put after messing with the FMS is I come over here and I like to dial in V2 directly. So the V2 here, let me go back a page, is going to be 141. And I am a happy camper. Everything's set up. Good time to pop on the flight director if you need it. Uh, we can set up our initial altitude. Uh, again, we're going up to this thing. It says we should do 9,000, so I'll dial in 9,000. Again, air traffic control in the real world is the one, so we're going to tell you what you can do. If you want to get a little exercise, you can press LNAV and VNAV. Nothing's going to happen except our VNAV here. And again, the only reason VNAV is even going to do anything is the fact that once auto throttle is selected, you can now use VNAV as a way to control your altitudes. The other thing you're going to notice is if you come over to your computer, you have the ability to go actually your navigational ND. Um, now has the ability to go ahead and show you kind of where you're going. You know, if I wanted to, let me go ahead and set my view to kind of a normal view. Whoopsies, apparently gear up, gear up, gear up. <laughs> Don't freak me out like that. Uh, so now, of course, what we can do is we can come in here and you know, we can adjust the zoom, we can zoom out, and we can see our entire little path here that's going to take us over to Providence, which honestly, it's like an 80 mile flight. It's like nothing, but you can see exactly what it looks like. One more thing I want to say before I uh, disappear here, and again, this is more than enough to get you started and be able to be able to safely navigate the plane, is uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look up here. There's this thing that says a PLN map and VOR. If you click it to plan mode, you now have this really cool trick. If you were to go down to the FMS and click legs, see this button that says the word step? It gives you the ability to jump 
between your waypoints, which means I can fast forward into the future and know exactly where I need to be. So you can see very clearly how Jewett is my place I get off. I grab Lafay, which is that kind of initial approach fix. I pop onto Kent 47. Then I write, write down QT. What a nice name. And this route will bring me all the way down onto the ground. One of the fun things when you do this view is you can actually see your airplane flying around. <laughs> it's just kind of neat. And you can also see the missed approach. You can even see the runway. Everything is here, which makes it super easy to plan flights because you can just come down here and look at it. Uh, when you're sick of looking at that, of course, I can pop back up here and switch back to map mode. It'll go back there. Speaking of map mode, by the way, uh, the center button's kind of fun. If you push that, it centers it. Uh, you can push it again, and then you get a vertical profile. And you get this cool, like, blue zone kind of a thing. You push it one more time. It'll bring you back to this one. So hopefully that video is uh, helpful. Um, some people say, what do you do with the two FMSs during flight? Um, I'm a little old-fashioned, at least I go with what I was taught many, many years ago. Um, the one on the left is the progress button. It's going to tell me what time I'm going to land. Obviously, we're going to get there at 1939. I'm not going to get there at 1939. <laughs> I haven't taken off yet. I haven't started my engines. And usually the run on the right-hand side, I like to go to legs mode, and I'll be able to view my legs as I'm crossing each one of them so I have a good idea of where I'm going to need to be, what my altitudes are going to be, things like that. I just find that easier for me, but obviously do what makes sense for you because that's you know going to be like anything. I love the fact they have an N1 limit button on here. Holds and things Things like that are for a very different day and by the way if you ever get stuck let's see you're uh, like a situation like this if you press initial reference and then you press the index button you have the ability to quickly jump between different modes so you know i can go select config and notice i can change my configuration file right there which is awesome and again if you go back there uh, you can do your approach speeds your offset if you need to go off the course uh, you have some navigational data if you need it obviously you know i don't have any fancy navigation data here i'm stuck with what they have for flight sim but that would all be covered inside of here and again this is just handy and at any point i can press the fix button give me a fix i want to go to cruise page give me the climb page all these details are all here a lot of this stuff uh, this should be for another day because a lot of these are fairly interesting to play with they give you optimum altitudes they're going to tell you what your engines are going to be doing they're going to tell you about your wind and you can even cancel your actually start your descent early but that is for a very very different video so hopefully this uh, helps you. Again, uh, we haven't even started the plane yet, but you have a pretty good idea of how to program this uh, flight management system. Like I said, it's really easy. You can always change it in flight if you have to. Be careful when you're flying, though, that you don't accidentally forget to dial in the runway you're landing on. Otherwise, you're going to get an ED, and what's going to happen is you're going to lose your LNAV and your VNAV because it's not going to know where it's supposed to go next. Um, common mistake, so just watch out for that one. But other than that, enjoy.